Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, and it is another hot day over here in Texas. We just hit a record um, month of September, hottest month in history, literally in history. Um, it's not cooling down. We've had over 60 days of 100 degree plus this uh, summer, so it's been pretty hot, and uh, you know, if anyone's complaining about unfavorable working conditions, I don't want to hear it, because uh, I've been working in my hot warehouse since early August, and it's probably the same temperature as a sauna in there, so I've, I've been sweating through about three shirts a day out there. And uh, I am ready for winter time. I'll just say that and then leave it at that. But um, wanted to give an update here. I got my first LTL pallet uh, all done and ready to be shipped out today. And that's about a thousand bucks. And it is a huge, huge savings. Um, I'm now going to be paying ten cents a pound versus. It was 35 cents to 40 cents, I think, before. So, you know, it's a huge, it's, that's a massive, massive savings. And anyone who's doing, you know, about that many books a week, a month, whatever, I would just recommend you wait to ship stuff out till you can build a pallet. I mean, it's so easy to do, it's faster. Um, and if you're not doing inventory placement service, you need to be. It cost me $95. So let me give you the breakdown. It cost me a total to ship a thousand books. It was 101 for the pickup plus 95, 65, I think it was for the, the inventory placement. So call it $200 to ship that same amount of books, um, you know, prior with individual boxes not only would have been probably like two separate pickups, which would have cost me seven something each, seven dollars and 85 cents each, I think. Call that $15. Then you add inventory placement fee, add the same amount, about 100, so that's 115. Then I'd be paying, call it 40 cents a, per pound, and it was 1165 pounds so that's at least $500 so call it $615 versus $200 so it's like a 300% savings um and when you're shipping the volume I'm shipping now I looked at um I guess it was July the month of July or no it was the month of August I looked at I spent 990 something dollars on shipping and so just, just looking at that, I would have saved about $600, which is, that's a lot of extra net profit guys at the end of the day. So now that I'm shipping probably double what I shipped then, I'm gonna save something like $1,200 and that's gonna go right into my pocket. So major savings, highly recommend moving to LTL. I'm going to make a video on my next pallet. Um, it's so easy, but it's also, I get it because it's really daunting doing it the first time. Luckily I had a buddy who did it before me and uh, it was very straightforward. Um, you just gotta, you know, the one thing that you just need to realize and I'll put this in the next video is like, you need to make sure that your boxes are full, you know, cause you need a, it needs to be stable and it needs to stack properly. That's one major thing um, that you need to watch out for. But uh, yeah, guys, I'm like, I'm so flooded right now. I've got, and it's a good thing I got. So I got this pallet going out. I've got 1,500 greens in the office behind it. And then I've got 44 Gaylords full in the warehouse with another 18 coming on Friday. So it's like, it's go time right now. And um, I'm, yeah, I'm super tired, but also... I'm very, very excited um, of what's to come. Um, my sales for the month. Uh, so here's one more thing I wanted to share. My sales were declining uh, all through this month, which there's some obvious reasons for that. I was out of town. I couldn't do any book stuff. Um, 
And then I haven't sent any books in yet this this whole week. So I haven't, the last time I sent out a book was probably September, I think it was September 1st, I sent out a couple hundred books. So I've been on the steady decline. Um, some very upfront uh, observations. I went from 2,800 books I'm now at 4,000 books in inventory. I'm not seeing much of a sales jump, guys. Uh, I'm just going to let you, I'm just going to put that out there. I really am not. Um, I looked into repricing, um, saw that there could be some work done. I have a software, but I went in and did a manual reprice, which is a whole different video because I realized that Essentially, hundreds, if not a couple thousand books were outside of my repricer range to where it like triggers it to, to reprice it, if that makes sense. So what I did was I went and I manually fixed it. It took an hour and 40 minutes to manually re reprice these books. And uh, that day I did 1,300 in sales. Next day I did like 900. The day after I did 900. So things picked back up again. So I'm still trying to evaluate and I, I don't know how much more my sales went up when I moved my inventory up 1200 books. I'm still waiting to see, but I'm not impressed to be honest with you. And I thought I was going to get a better jump. And, uh, I did 16,500 in sales in August in this month. I don't know if I'll even hit that. So I do know this October is going to be huge for me. Um, even, even, even though textbook season will be quote unquote over, it's usually August, September, I think August, uh, October, I'm going to hit 20 to 25. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and that's because all these pallet shipments are going to start rolling in. And my goal is one pallet minimum per week. I'm trying to do two a week and to do two a week for those of you, or even one a week, for those of you who are wondering, my average pull for Gaylords is around 55 to 60 books a piece. So, you know, do the math and see, you know, okay, in a pallet, I need a thousand books. Divide a thousand by 55 or 60. It's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of, you know, tw low 20s that you need to get per week and go through to send out a pallet a week. So just an FYI for you guys. Um, <clears throat> I think I went through 36 Gaylords last week. Um, and this week, this week I focus more on listing, but I'm still going through plenty of them. I'm trying to get through. I got um, a buddy coming in today who I'm going to pay. And we're going to try and get through a ton today, probably 12 to 16 at least. So you can get through them very fast. My average time to get through one is, um, it, depending on if it's full or not, it's about an hour to an hour and a half, um, sometimes less. I go really fast, you guys. Um, I, I have, there's just things you learn over time. I mean, I, I can see books now and I just toss, I know which ones are crap. I just toss them immediately. I'm going through as fast as I can, tossing them behind my head and uh, pulling out the ones that I think are going to be good to flip upside down and scan. So there's little tips and tricks you'll learn along the way. So don't freak out if it's taking you longer to get through them. But, um, you know, I'd love to hear any questions you guys have in the comments below um, regarding bulk, regarding cherry picking, whichever you want. Um Please stop asking me where I'm getting these. I mean, for obvious reasons. I've already told you guys, Goodwill Outlet is the best place to start. And it's still one of my main sources. So go to the Goodwill Outlet. That's the one that I will give you guys. But other than that, I can't be telling you my sources. I worked really hard to get them. I made, I did a lot of cold calling initially, guys, to find resources. And... A couple of them aren't even in the same state I'm in. So you got to make phone calls. You might have to go face-to-face, -face, meet people. You need to do dry runs, see if they're any good. And you just have to do your due diligence. So questions, concerns, let me know in the comments. 
If you want to email me, that's fine. Hayden Aquilon. It's my the YouTube name at gmail.com. All right, guys. Talk later. Bye.